everybody, welcome back to XCOM. It's Operation Web Rumble. This is our Haven Assault. We have something very special happening on this mission. Hopefully, it works out for us. We're taking out Zenith, Beardo, Yggdrasil, Dynamite, Silencer, and Angerbot. Uh, we are expecting to run into Chosen here. We have a Frost Bomb, which is uh, maybe helpful. A couple of Bull Pups, the Sniper Rifle. Damage-wise, it eh, could be interesting. Could be interesting. We'll see. Wish me luck. Here we go. Today's trivia question is this. Which class suffered the most deaths last season, War of the Chosen Season 6, on regular non-covert op missions? A, the Marine. B, the Marksman. C, the Sapper. Or D, the Assault Infantry. You guys seem to really enjoy these trivia questions. We're going to keep them up. And I should be able to just read them as I've been uh, right before the logs. And speaking of logs, today's is written by Beardo the Merc, who writes for, you guessed it, Nicholas Beardo Cutter. So I might not have thought things through breaking into Bradford's office. Threw me in the brig for a few days. They tried to decide if they should take me in or drop me off in desert somewhere. After they verified me and offered me a place in the team, I took it. Wasn't really an option after what Advent. Let's not get into that right now. The doc said healing is slow, but I'm not gonna talk about it to some shrink, not yet. He did suggest keeping a log, so here it is. Happy freaking New Year. All right, Beardo. Let's go, buddy. For those who don't recall, uh, Beardo's backstory involved him uh, breaking into Bradford's office and saying, well, if I got in here, that's pretty good. Okay. Note the optional objective. Down not far from your position. Move in and help fend off the attacking alien forces. So check this out. We have in this middle section a downed dead mother. <laughs> dead mother. Den mother. Uh, she might actually be <laughs> I don't know actually hold on a second is she there no she's up here thank god uh that's pretty far away she's bleeding out for eight turns and uh we need to save her you might recognize this says pool mother not den mother that's the special something we got cooked up for you so a couple of ways we can go about this number one we can go and try and stabilize her which I'm probably going to have to try. And number two, uh, we can just finish the mission in eight turns because she's going to bleed out. The problem is, is she is extremely far away. Uh, that's unlucky. Very unlucky. I'm going to take Dynamite to kind of scout with Phantom here. I'm going to definitely try and keep the high ground for as many people as we can compared to this dropped section move, move, move. um i'll take go, this go, go. if i have to beardo's actually got some pretty significant got range it. there yggdrasil as well we'll take I this advance. kind of a cool map with the ufo all covered in tarps and stuff okay who's our chosen oh god Oh, this is actually kind of exciting. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of exciting. Oh, no. He's immune to melee. Are you kidding me? That's pretty bad. Also low profile, so his defense increases. Bewildered is nice. So if we are able to hit him, three attacks in a turn, he's going to start taking more damage. And then skirmishers, obviously, because that's our starting faction. Now... The Hunter, we have a new mod called Don't Move a Muscle, which reworks some of his skills. And I'll show you that when we uh, when the time is right here. Okay. We just picked up a unique signature. One of the chosen is here. Things that just thing got interesting. For us until we deal with it. On the plus side, it looks as if we should be able to... Nice. Uh, we should be able to save this group pretty quickly. Okay, team, that's not the most amazing start I've ever seen in my life. Uh, uh. 
It's fine. They're gonna save all their shots for when it actually matters. Clearly. There's one. <laughs> one damage. Oh my god. These guys have a small range of one to three. There. Hello. Okay. Okay. Okay, baby. What do we want to do here? I, I, I'm pretty tempted to just run right in here. Um, I think with Beardo, I'll actually grab this full cover and see if that's enough to kind of clear this group. I think we're going to have to end up killing the, the enemies around here first. I wonder if I should just set up a brace, or maybe I should try and get up here. The, ch the problem is, is like, we do need to be motoring towards that objective, so... Maybe I'll position Silencer over in this area, so that we can get up and deal with that Sectoid. And then let's move these guys in under the cover of this downed UFO. Trying to keep cover from the, the enemies that we know exist up there. Moving far. And then maybe I will actually just move up here. This is a little... I gotta, I gotta be concerned that they might come to this edge and ignore these guys. Probably won't. But I don't really want to just give them an open flank there. The Resistance are going to have to do things without us for a second. Oh, that's an interesting grapple point. I thought he was going up to this building for sure. Oh, he's dropping down? I don't know how I feel about that. Because now that... If this group comes over, they might look at us as some better targets. Those aliens are still not technically active. Again, reminder, we've disabled the AI to AI activation. So we're forced to get involved quite a bit more. Now, we are going to trigger a group here for sure. Um, so I think we should probably fight it. And then we still have five turns to get over here. It looks like we have pods over here, over here, and the Chosen, of course, back there. So, who should I send up here first? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, Yggdrasil, actually. And we just use one of these so that we don't have to use his action. Repositioning. Surprise. Okay, it's just two. It's just two. That's fine. I hope. Now I only need two damage on this bad boy. Certainly we can get that. 57 there. We could go for a ripjack on that also. But his ripjack could be useful over here too. So let's see what we can do with these others. Uh, dynamite staying in concealment might not be the most horrible idea. Kind of depends on how we want to handle this. If I go for this ripjack and we fall short, or we trigger a, an enemy group over here, then that's kind of scary. Maybe... Hmm... You know what? This is pretty good. I think this is decent. 72 on the subdue. I think we'll come in right here with Zenus. We'll still have cover against that other guy in case things go poorly. He's got 6 health though, so should be pretty good. Nice job. And some loot. A core. Alright, we'll take it. Anger bot. 
Do I want to use an explosive on this? I hope it's that would be the safest way so I don't have to go venture onto that side of the map as much. And even if it doesn't kill him, I'll have an open shot from Yggdrasil. Before having to run over there. Beardo shot. Not bad. It's that shotgun. Oh, that's actually fine. That's actually... That actually works for us. Don't waste my time. Because even if it misses, we can still get the one. Beautiful. Very clean, team. Very clean. I, I hope you didn't wear yourself out on the lightweights. Okay. Now... I'm still amazed if I can get her up here, that would be nice. Why would anyone trust a faction built on disloyalty? I don't have any cover here. Ugh, that's not great. Um, so we probably want to get her up to these trees then. Ideally. Oh my God. They're right Man, below us. Advent isn't backing off. They've got units in the AO that are ignoring our forces just to get a better shot at the civilians. Surprise! Yikes. It's getting a little ugly around here. And there's our reveal. Now this guy just... Was it the sectoid or the trooper that shot? This guy's gotta die down here. Okay, so... This is the new... <laughs> this is the new hunter tracking shot. And... It works a lot differently than before. Oh, nice shot. Previously, he would track us and you just move. And you're fine. Now, when he tracks you, you have to stay put. You cannot move from that or the tracking shot will fire. I don't know if it's guaranteed to hit. But, uh... It does mean that he's slowing your progress a lot more. Position. Sensors indicate hostile forces are closing in fast. We need to get in there before the aliens slaughter those people. Okay. Silencer is not going to be able to reach the sectoid. However, I don't know where, exactly where he is. We might have a flank shot available. The other option is to simply wait. Wait, who is it that's pinned? He's got the guilt, so he loses will because the civilian died. And she should have the target. Yeah. So, the hunter targets an XCOM unit to which he has direct line of fire and places a laser sighting beam on the target. If the XCOM unit tries to move from their current position, the sniper will fire. So, problematic, to say the least. Um, okay, so I think he's here. He's definitely there. Uh, I don't have any heat build up, which is kind of shitty. Um, I could possibly get a grenade off here. But it's too dark to really see if that's going to land. I think it will. It's worth a shot. I don't know if that... I don't think... I don't think that hit. Who can I send over here to get a visual on this, though? I guess we're gonna go down here. Oh, yeah. See, we were really close. This is gonna be rough, because... I mean, we have to do it. Now I need four. Unfortunately, my best chance is going to be something like this. With a running gun. Angerbot can't see it. Beardo. We have the grenade launcher, but I would really like to save that if we could. I would really like to. Okay. Well, I guess this is our play for now. And 
Good to go. Even if there's a mind control next turn, we can probably kill, but it's just another problem we have to deal with. This is actually a pretty decent shot. What's happening? A civilian's running somewhere, I think. Oh! Absolutely beautiful! Oh, that's them. Okay, I see what happened. Hey, basic wildcats? That's like a 50% chance to get plus one critical damage, I think. Dude, that was a sick shot. So I guess that was kind of spoilered by those guys um, moving. Okay. Beardo, I'm going to get you to peek here just to reveal this left side. Looks fine. This will ultimately be where I want to move uh, our sniper. I think let's just go to full cover here for now. No enemies in sight. Alright. Pretty successful so far. Three civilians are saved. And these type of missions, this is one of the reasons we disabled the AI to AI activation, because everything would trigger and then it became almost impossible to save civilians. Because they would just be getting slaughtered on the other end of the map. Ooh, we got stunnies. Always hate when stun lancers show up. Another batch of stunnies there. So we have a batch here, a batch here, chosen, and then a batch on this side too. Now, if we had somebody that had revive charges by now, uh, we could actually revive Pool Mother down here. But we'll settle for a stabilize. Come on. So many 65s. Flopping on the other side of the coin. There you go, there you go. This does mean that sometimes things like this happen where, like, they're shooting a pod over here. And they're not technically activating. They're just kind of shooting at each other. But I think I still think it's a cleaner implementation than we had it last season. Ooh, nice flank. Two damage crit. Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. Now, where's Zenith? Nobody's marked anymore. We got four turns, so... Let's see, how do we want to play this? Let's, get this show on the road. Let's see what Beardo sees here. Still good. Else can grab the cactus. Silencer just needs to beeline it up here. Affirmative. Yiggs as well, as I will affectionately now call him. Got to keep in mind there could be faceless spawning soon too out of some of these guys. If I come down here, I feel like the group that we saw there is very likely to go live. I'm thinking I could probably tuck down here and be okay. Got it. Moving. That seems fine. Okay. Let's just overwatch here. You're going to set up a brace. We'll overwatch. Anger bot. Stunny just absolutely murking. <laughs> that guy's look. That position looks safe. We're live. We are live. Oh, Hellborn. 
Your two damage crits, they will be missed. These stunnies are going to be kind of hard to deal with. Not far enough. Okay, thankfully he did not mark Zenith. Now, one of the challenges is that Pool Mother's out in the open here. We need some of these stun lancers to start getting hit. So if I go to rev if I go to uh, Stabilize, it's still going to be a challenge. Oh my god. One damage crit. Oh my. Are you kidding me. Three turns. I do have this side some protection. This is that preview bodies locations. So you can see which tile. They're always on that middle tile, which is quite handy. Thing is, if I if I don't do this now, then I'm gonna have problems. Whatever you say. Okay, well he's actually out of sight. You're good. Just stay with me. Okay, she's unconscious. That's a win in my eyes. But now. Things need to be done against this. For obvious reasons. What's my arm strength like? Looks like I could get into that first tile, but I'm probably not going to be able to... to get it from here. Angerbot, we do have... Combat protocol. Our cooldown, though, is five turns. But that does guarantee the kill. I think we'll take this position Let's here. Could try that. She doesn't see anyone. Silencer, I need to try and get a little bit more involved if I can. You got six health. And then we got to be mindful of the Stun Lancer here, although he does have some other targets. Hmm. I go. 37. We'll probably just have to overwatch her. Seems doable. Silencer can come up. 40% is actually not bad. It's not bad. Oh, you know what? Beardo with the shotguns. <laughs> I mean, these guys, they can, they can do this. He just can't move, right? Yeah. So... I think we'll take advantage of... Our shotguns doing one damage. Get it together. Now Zenith is not totally safe here. I could aid protocol him, actually. That might be a decent option. They they do of course have these other guys in the way, but yeah, it's kind of a tough call. I think I better... Oh, I can't see him. Damn. Okay, well. Let's see. Oh, if you could land this. Oh, that's huge. That's good. I don't know if he's... I don't know if he's close enough to come and land... <laughs> Zenith, though. He's overwatched. Okay, okay. 
Oh, shit. I hope that trooper doesn't go for it. I hope that trooper doesn't go for it. Save it. Save him. Save him, guys. Oh, no. Ugh. Damn it. That was the risk. Keeping my eye on you. Frick. That's another one down. Dropping like flies right now. That's a good shot. That's rough, man. Come on, finish him. Oh, my Lanta. Mateo, can you do it? No? Yeah, I mean, I think this is the play. Beardo, <laughs> unfortunately, is flanked by this guy. So, we could do the, the shotguns again. Dynamite has a decent shot here. I mean, I don't think we would be doing anything else. Nice job. Nice job. We'll go grab this stuff. Hey, I got the thing. 16% I don't love. Uh, is his movement enough to get to us? Doesn't look like it. It's pretty far. This shouldn't kill him, but it should kill the other guy that's back there. Might open up some sight lines too. To see this stun lancer. Now, actually, the stun lancer can do this at full movement range, can't he? So I don't know if there's a way for me to accurately see whether or not he can get there. It would be pretty close. I feel like knowing the stun lancers <laughs> probably could get there. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get this through either. I can't move him. But he's in full, so the only problem is really him coming in for the lance. Is it clear? Maybe we try the aid protocol here. We should have a visual. <laughs> we don't. I should have checked a little bit cleaner. Yeah, we would have it from here. Damn it. Hmm. Well, I think we gotta play it slow. Oh yeah. Attacking on site. There's other targets there, so hopefully he decides to go for those instead. He's running in. We did land a shot. We landed two shots. Oh. Any whiffs. Okay, we've got a shotgun. We're a shotgun shot away now. Still have one more Lancer, though. The thing that's, that's really tough about these guys at this point is that your soldiers are so weak that it makes this incredibly... Ever, even these lower-level enemies are very nerve-wracking. Only four civilians dead right now.
So it looks like we're gonna at least have a showdown here with the with the hunter. Nice. Now if we could just focus fire this. This uh, other one, that would be great. Okay, let's get reloads in here. He's coming around the left side. Does he get a flank? He might be trying to stab this guy. Ooh, the shotgun landed. Love to see it. Yeah, I think he's going for the stab. Oh, he missed. All right, he's in kill range, though, for us. That tracking shot mark now pinning someone down is actually so good. Because, like, especially this guy, I need to be moving him. Mateo, if you're going to go up against the stun lancer, at least pick a side of the tree and flank the guy. I'll give you a sporting chance. Hmm. I can't really flank there. However, uh... However, I can go for the rip jack. Might not be enough, though. That's the problem. 70% decent. If I go to lead the target, delays him until his turn, but that's pretty good. I don't think he's got any, yeah, no reflexes or anything. Silencer still pinned. If we don't kill him, he could definitely come down and flank us if you wanted to, we can move into, like, this position. Hmm. Okay, here's what we can do. So, if I get the three damage from Yggdrasil, then we can kill with the shotgun. It's non issue. It's a non issue. I think I'll start moving some of these guys up. No need to ask twice. Now, when the hunter engages here, how are things going to go? It's like one active. It's killing time. Nobody's locked down here. So he seems to be more in this area. I think this calls for moving okay. our sniper over a bit. Whatever you say. I don't think we have to worry about grabbing the bodies because that'll happen automatically at the end. Uh, reload you. There better be something there. You're good. Oh, he's live. Somewhere. So we have the frost bomb. We have the regular... We have a bunch of regular grenades. Uh, he has brittle. The Elder's Hunter. From what we've heard, he's a relentless tracker with an unnatural ability to call his shots. Oh, look at that! Isn't that here. fancy? Okay, that looked pretty good to my eyes. Yikes. That is not good. Hey, I'll take it.
We didn't know that he was triggered in this section until too late. But... Yeah, that's gonna be tough. We do have the resistance to help. I kind of wish they were just shooting that other guy. But I think he's got a little grenade, right, that he can launch. Which would be also pretty bad. So I can come in and I, I can undaze these guys. Um, so I probably have to do. It's just, we're in such an unfortunate position. Like, I'm going to have to take a whole turn to do that. But I have to, because otherwise he's going to try and uh, take them. Half cover with silencer. It's not my preferred method. If I were to run and gun here, that gives me... I could open this, I could revive, and then I could throw something. But I'm, like, super flanked. He does 2 to 5, so he'd have to crit... Um, so it's a risk. But that gets me Beardo. And then I could, like, freeze for an action. Stick and move. Got it covered. Okay. Easy now, soldier. Okay, so Beardo's up. Do I go for the Chosen or this guy? This guy has that little bomb. That's what worries me. The fire mag grenade. It's not a ton of damage, but it's enough to cause me headaches. Oh, it's, it's so close. Uh, this could be decent, actually. Doesn't apply the frost, which could be important because we are flanked there. Could be important. If I set up my brace and go lead the target here, there's potential, but we need like a full six damage. Uh, let's actually check something here. So, Bewildered. He is taking the additional damage because he's getting hit from uh, the Resistance team, actually. But he may go for a... Uh, if, if we don't revive all these people, he might go for just a straight-up capture. Which is why I think, like, freezing him could be quite helpful. I could also throw this down as a free action. In case he does try to come and get her through here. I might not have a better time to use it. And then I've got Yggdrasil as well that is still down. So I could come here and res and then go and hide. But that means I'm not going to have the shot for him. Or even putting it on the hunter or lead the target. Ooh, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? So, if we take this shot, we have a grenade there. I frost bomb the hunter to shut down one of his actions. Then I could come in here, res Yggdrasil, who has another grenade. Or actually, oh yeah, he's only going to have one action. So yeah, probably the grenade. And then we've got Angerbot... 
but he would have an action down, so he probably doesn't come in there. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I kind of have to there, brother. Ooh, actually, hold on a sec. Now, am I still... No, okay. They just have cover. However, I could go here to full. That helps me. Immune to melee and increased damage. Keeping these grenades for him would be good, but... It will be strong. Just with how bunched up our crew is there, You're not much I think we have to do this. Here, catch. He is coming in for it. Holy crap. But if you're going to leave such a valuable source of intel just lying around, how can I... Whoa. We don't see that every day. I wonder what hurts more. Okay. So he didn't capture her. Worse, he got some knowledge, but we have the card that's reducing it. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just fine. <laughs> I'm okay with it. We did lose a soldier, however. I thought he was going to go for a, uh, a capture there. It's not often that we have a situation like that where we're unable to take down a Chosen, but this early with what we've been seeing, some of the challenges already, yeah. That could have went worse. Could have went better. Zenith, RIP, buddy. You did save Pool Mother, though. Beardo, 2 for 3, 14 damage with the Wi-Fi. Yggdrasil, MVP, 1 for 3, 16 damage. Dynamite, 2 for 2, 10. Silencer, 2 for 3, 17. And Angerbot, giving up a little bit of knowledge, but that's okay. Lastly, Pool Mother, love to introduce you guys. I, uh, what I, what I could have done there, and where, where I made the mistake is not looking at our, um, field medics visibility range to see if we could give first aid protocol to Zenith. So, that's, that's the do differently for me, for sure. We did get a couple promotions there. Look at Zara, Pool Mother, Morlin. Okay. So if you guys don't know, uh, Ni, as you might know on the Discord server, for the past several seasons has been the one who literally goes through every character submission, checks that the cosmetics are working, reviews the biography to make sure that they follow the rules and that they're good to go. Uh, it's a lot of work. And... In a way of kind of showing her thanks, we decided to include her uh, as part of this new Den Mother rescue mission. And so in the custom tweaks that we have, uh, we have built up her look and everything. She's got her own unique voice. And uh, I'll have to apply her level 2 and level 3 armors from the uniform pool. Um, I can show you how to do that. But yeah, she's in, and she's a unique class as well. So last season, we had the commander kind of taking the Jane Kelly class. And uh, now we've got Zara, Pool Mother, Morlin. Very, very cool. We got 16 civilians out of that. Illyrium cores, wildcats, troopers, sectoids, 
stun lancers, troopers. These are the things that were dropped by um, uh, Zenith, but we get to bring that all back. So, yeah. I wish that went cleaner, but I did misplay that aid protocol. Hello, Commander. The council you once knew is no more. Its membership have all sworn loyalty to the Advent Administration. With one exception. It is good to see you again. In the days since your capture, I have done all I can to aid the Resistance from the inside. It was these Resistance operatives that provided the intel leading to your recent extraction. As of now, Resistance forces are currently somewhat disorganized. If we are to defeat Advent and their alien masters, you must change this before it is too late. What you are seeing are classified reports of missing civilians from across the world. Their numbers are growing. We suspect they have been taken to a nearby Advent Black Site, though its exact location remains unknown. Time is short, Commander. We need you to take charge of resistance operations throughout the world. Establish contact with the local cells and bring them into the fold. Find this black site and shut it down. Save our world. The clock is ticking. Good luck, Commander. New objective added. Okie dokie. Keeping tabs on all our operations, Commander. Our people are standing by for your orders. One of the things that really hampered our uh, economy last season was uh, the the Chosen cracking down in all those areas and reducing our income. Like, late game, we were making peanuts. It was crazy. Okay, Zara. Happy to have you here. Let's meet you. We'll do a couple promotions first. Silencer. So, I think Breakthrough is really, really helpful for us. Let's go ahead and take that. So that we can attack and then just slightly reposition. It's always nice. And now we should start being able to pull people, right? Oh no, not yet. Intimidate, skirmisher, or alloy plating. One point of regenerating standard armor. It's not bad. Extra mobility... Um, convert standard hits to grazes and intimidate stat penalties within eight tiles and a 40% chance to panic when we deliver a critical hit. I think, um, the way that things are going, I'm going to take the alloy plating and try to just be a little bit more survivable, if you will. Okay, pool mother. So she's the, the keeper class. This class has some really neat stuff. Um, you could go and look it up for yourself if you want to spoil it, but since we've got everything um, kind of spoiler tagged in the ability tree, uh, it'll be a surprise as we go. But this is Zara Poolmother Moreland. Very cool look. Very true to life. Very cool, just like in real life. Uh, we call her Poolmother for obvious reasons. Again, thank you for all the work you do. She has taken on a bit of an apprentice this season with uh, Kex helping out, going through submissions as well. But, um, yeah, really, really thankful for all the work that you do. So let's go through here and check out her uh, bio. This is also her special voice pack that only she has. I don't know if the preview actually works right. for these. There we go. Nyreen right Kandros, Mass Effect. Okay, so future odd here. Uh, we had a little bit of a spelling mistake and a truncated biography on Nii's character. Uh, that's since been updated in our custom tweaks file, so if you haven't played this mission yet, I suggest updating your mods to make sure that you get the, the Nii the way that she's supposed to be. Uh, Zara Poolmother Norlin, not Morlin like it's spelled, and uh, we only got the first paragraph of her bio, so I'm going to read the full thing now, and then I'll cut into the next character uh, when we're done. So, born in the early 2000s as an only child to a single mother, Zara grew up in Lulea, a harbor city located on Sweden's northern east coast. She never knew much about her father as her mother refused to talk about him, which made her feel like a part of her was always missing. 
That paired with the fact that her mom worked long hours to support them, often leaving her in the care of her grandmother, is probably what fueled her desire to leave, to seek out adventure and exploration. She never did, though. She faithfully stuck around, feeling increasingly more trapped in the cold climate most young people left behind. She would spend most winter nights looking up at the stars and the occasional aurora, dreaming of a different world, dreaming of seeing the rest of the country, the rest of the world, dreaming of something to break up the monotonous existence she resided in. Careful what you wish for, they say. When the invasion first hit, she was a young teenager juggling school, friends, and home life. Her biggest trouble in life being to motivate herself to get up from the warm, nice bed and head out in the often freezing cold weather. Nothing quite like a crisp minus 25 degrees Celsius, that's minus 13 Fahrenheit, and knee-high fresh snow to wade through to start off your day. The first heard about the invasion on the news, or they first heard about the invasion on the news, as the aliens hit the major cities in the south of the country first. They couldn't believe it. Was it really true? As more footage and articles kept popping up, they slowly realized the severity of it all. Zara, her mother, and grandmother started to pack up what essential belongings they had, knowing what event or knowing that eventually the aliens would find an interest in such a vital harbor area. They filled their car to the brim and steered towards the inland, seeing countless of people walking along the roads, not stopping for anyone or anything until they ended up in a small village surrounded by a forest. There they had stayed for a few months, learning how to survive without modern amenities and how to take advantage of the surroundings. Zara loved it. Not the invasion itself, of course, but the new skills she could acquire and the excitement to be able to explore and think on the fly. She moved from settlement to settlement under the coming years, never really setting foot in the cities unless it was to get supplies. Her grandmother eventually passed away, her death probably hastened by their lifestyle. Zara grew up to be a very resourceful woman. She learned a little bit of everything, shooting, hunting, building, and most of all, teaching, to name a few. She seemed to have a knack for making other people listen to her, especially kids. So their role in the camp eventually turned into something of a mentor and teacher. This is how she earned her nickname Pool Mother, because of how she pooled together scarce resources and people, taking them under her wing to teach them about this new life, much like a mother would. And, for those that don't know, Zara is a recently new mother. This is very touching because, A, we've known, we've known Zara for a few years now, uh, but this is a pretty revealing biography, and I feel like she's kind of opened up to us a lot here. Now I'm, now I really, I really need to cherish this character, and if something bad happens, I am gonna feel horrible. Uh, so we'll do our best. We're gonna do our absolute best. But once again, thanks to, thanks to Nee, that's what her Discord nickname is aka Pool Mother, for handling the character pool for the last few years, and uh, also for teaching Kex her ways as he's joined in to help her and uh, supported these campaigns. So, awesome stuff. Happy to have you here. This class is not a proficiency class. Uh, this is just a standard class with three trees. She has a grapple gun, so she can move into elevated positions. But one of the cool things that her grapple gun can do specifically is she can shoot loot and grab it from the battlefield. So she doesn't have to run into the square. She can snag it and bring it to her, which is really powerful. Resupply ammo is neat. So you reload the primary weapon of a targeted allied unit. If this unit's equipped with experimental ammo, its effect will be applied to the reloaded weapon until its next regular reload zero turn cooldown. If the target soldier already carries experimental ammo, its effect will be temporarily overridden by Keeper's experimental. So any type of experimental, if she's on a mission, she should carry it because she can fill other people's weapons with that ammo. Very cool. Uh, one good eye, gain a bonus five aim and five crit when taking multiple primary weapon shots against the same target in a row, stacks up to three times. And the quote is, I used to be one of the best shots out there. Losing an eye knocked me down a peg, but I can still dish out the pain as long as I can focus on one target at a time. So, uh, again, you can go and look and spoil this for yourself if you want, but I am excited to see it uncover as we go, and uh, really happy to have you in the pool, pool mother. We'll see you in eight days or so, I suppose. All right, so we have 88 supplies right now. Uh, this is this was gonna give us a hundred and some, so 
I'm thinking... Yeah. I'm thinking what we do is turn those supplies into rookies. I've only got one available right now. We are going to hit a new month, so we're going to get new covert actions. And uh, having some additional rookies there will be beneficial for sure. In terms of potential bonds, Elsa and Mikra, not a bad bond pairing with the uh, Sniper and the Assault class. Boltos and Mikra as well. Skirmisher Assault class. Okay. Anything's possible. Let's let's wait it out here. On one hand, uh, well, actually on both hands, <laughs> I'm very happy that we got the Hunter. First, I think he's the least intimidating of the three. Uh, even with the rework, once we can get up closer to him, he's much easier to deal with than the other two. And uh, second, it's cool because of, because of the rework, we get to show that off earlier in the campaign. So, ooh! Ooh, that could save us some dollars. I'm really glad we waited. And just where do you think you're going? If it's a fight you're after. Now, this is when dark events are going to start popping too. Uh, so this is when things get scary with Grim Horizon. We're going to have to decide what we go for and what we don't. 
Now, I could spend 12 days trying to get these rookies. <laughs> this is the thing with the skirmisher start that's kind of interesting, is it impacts these excavations. So, I could finish this in 11 and get the money to buy them. Or, I can go and just scan them. And this will come in later as well. Yeah, maybe that's the plan. Just try and conserve as much money as we can. It is 12 days. We do have some people coming back. Um, we are going to have more missions to do, though. Let's see. I mean, we could always do both, too. We could we could get the rookies from here in 12 days. We can buy some rookies right now. Uh, either way, I think it's good. And this can be sometimes two or three rookies. So I think it can be one, but I think it can go up to three. I don't know if I've ever seen four, but... Plus, we'll head over to the supply drop to grab that cash. It is unfortunate, Commander, that your recent efforts have proven to be so mediocre. <laughs> Tell me about it, bro. <laughs> I'm already beating myself up, okay? I don't need some... Baldy in the... in the darkness. Hammering on me, emotionally. Alright. All Advent soldiers have a chance to reanimate psionic zombies after... Oh, after they die. Okay. Uh, that's not a great one. <laughs> that is not a great one. I don't know what the chance is. Probably not that high, but if I can counter it, I, I will. Um, there's nothing I can do here right now. Um, I'll keep, I'll keep this. 188 supplies. So we'll make a stop over here. And then we'll look at... Well, we should look at our Covert Ops first. Um, another new mod that we're running is a Hunt the Chosen chain integration with CI. So there's now essentially five things that you need to do to Hunt the Chosen. You need to do the Covert Action, an Infiltration, Locate the Stronghold Covert Action, then an Assault to Rescue this thing, and then Identify the Stronghold's Access Point. Uh, it's much more complicated. The nice thing is, is that it doesn't expire or reset if you mess something up um and you don't have to do them all in a row so you could go here to increase faction influence it would take 14 days minor chance of an ambush which i would like to avoid but early on it might not be so bad um so that's something we could consider doing uh and if we put three soldiers in here it might not be bad because then we could actually just fight the ambush we'd have a sergeant there as well anyways it's an option alien corpses might not be horrible uh we can negate soldier capture here but uh there is an ambush potential counter this chosen activity this might be this might be decent again though ambush and uh risk of capture we could spend some intel and then modular frame design for the bullpup rifles. Man, these are not amazing covert actions for me. Uh, not amazing. I'd have to send a soldier and a scientist. We could boost some aim, though. So that's not a bad option. So let's think about this. How long is this mission? It's a long one, too. So I think sending a rookie does make sense. It would put Galen in over uh, 71. And then she'd get the extra benefits from being promoted as well. And then I'd have to send a scientist. We have two, so it's not going to slow things down too much. Um, and then I, I don't know if we still have to do the research after this or not. Let's send out Tequaticus Polymeres. Cool looking guy. This is actually nice that the scientists are included in here because we can kind of see their look a little bit. A little bit more interesting than just going out in these random like lab coats. So uh, yeah, we'll send we'll send Mod. Mod Ellis. Negate soldier wound. I don't think we're gonna put the extra soldier in there. We'll just let this go. 19 days. And then here, oh, that's really concerning. Because it's, um, it's definite chance of an ambush here, right? But if I could counter that, 
just to keep our, our income going, that would be good. But maybe, maybe we can take the hit on that one for now and not stress about it too much. I, if, if I'm going to do something like that, I'd probably go here to increase faction influence. We would have to send one sergeant. So the only one we have is Mikra. And Mikra I kind of need for missions right now. So until we get more sergeants, I think we just got to be chill. We could also go here with Mikra. But then we're in that, that same exact uh, scenario. That being said, hold on a sec. We have another Assault Infantry available in five days. So we at least have that class covered. We have Phalanx that kind of do similar things. You know what? I'm going to actually do this. There's a minor chance of a Soldier Wound here. But I'm going to do it. I still can't build any of the armors because our research is uh, not there yet with that breakthrough that we took. So I was looking to make like a undercover thing so we could do this a little faster. And then maybe I will hire a rookie straight up here to do the, the faction location. All right. Let's do it. So I've got Matt Glangon, Bobo, and we have Matt Brunton. Oh, a couple of... Yeah, it's both Matts. I didn't even notice that. Uh, 72 versus 65 aim. Will is quite a bit lower, but that's a pretty substantial difference there. I think we'll go ahead and take Matt Brunton. And then we can see who repopulates that list, actually. Clay Wolf. Ooh, interesting. So now these guys are a lot more equal. Clay Wolf, I probably still give the edge compared to Bobo here because uh, his will is very similar. He's got the little bit of extra aim, um, but we're likely going to be hiring a few anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and meet Matt Pale Rider Brunton. Badass look too. I like this. The studs there. It's like old school punk rock, man. From the United Kingdom. On December 27, 2002, Matt was born into a loving family living in the southeast of England. Growing up near the woods, he learned to hunt and took great pleasure in the thrill of tracking and eventually killing his prey. His life was almost idyllic until the aliens came. A UFO blown off, uh, blown off course crashed outside his house, picking up debris all around. The doors of his house were blown open and aliens swarmed in, killing his mother and father almost instantly. Among the aliens was a chrysalid who devoured his brother as well. It then crawled up the stairs and slashed Matt, taking out his eye and leaving him scarred. But he was quick in using a pistol he was able, or he always kept under his pillow. He was able to exact revenge. He quickly grabbed his lucky knife and jumped out his window and fled into the woods. But his wound was infected, so he had cut out the scar tissue before it spread, causing agonizing pain. Damn. Fortunately, he survived... And a few days later, he went back to the ruins of his house and harvested the claws of the beast he killed, which he took as a trophy, the first of many to come. I'm guessing... Well, let's see. He might have it on him somewhere else. He spent the next few years hunting aliens, thinking he was the only one uh, who would. Until he was found by XCOM and he agreed to join them, he would bring down Advent no matter how many bodies he would have to leave in his wake. Yeah, neat. So, here's his lucky knife. And I'm going to guess that... The claws are just maybe these spikes. Yeah, really cool. That's awesome. I'm tempted to look at your other gear, but... Yeah, harvested the claws of the beast he killed, which he took as a trophy. I have to imagine it's those studs. But yeah, awesome to have you, and I'm going to send you on this mission right now. Because getting that faction soldier, the way things are going... <sighs> Jeez. Let's go. Okay, so you're in there. That's fine. You know what? I'll actually put you with the... The bullpup, I think. So 15 days, 21 hours. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. For some reason, I thought that reduced it. But not that one. Okay. Uh, Pale Rider Brunton. Let's go along. Minor soldier wound, 16 days. Good luck. 
Okay. I still have six ready. And we have some people coming back from being tired. Avenger plotting Let's go grab this board. cash. Then we can start the uh, GTS build. The results of our breakthrough were quite fascinating. All right. With the advent officer currently in cold storage, we should perform the autopsy as soon as possible. Now, I should go hybrid materials here. And then we'll go into probably resistance comms. I will make that our highest priority. I really need an engineer. We need a, a covert action to rescue an engineer. That would be very helpful. Because things are tight. Here we go, baby. Okay, so Nazara and Marcel got promoted. Plus, we now have a Templar. Let's see who it is. My people understand the value of our That's a cool look. The full, like, blacked out top half of the head. Hell yeah. Trial by fire and stay with me. Stay with me is the one that uh, prompts bleed outs more frequently, but... Looking at the behind the scenes of how this is actually made, its impact is actually very low. Trial by fire, I don't remember. Ooh, yes. That I like. Okay. A couple things to do in here. Uh, promotions, first of all. Let me see a marine. Let me see a marine. Sapper. Ah, uh, I'll take it. I'll take that. Okay. Congratulations, Schmidt. You're going to be blowing a lot of things up. Stargrave. Let me see a Marine. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Well, um... Sapper it is. I think grenades right now might carry us. They might, they might have to carry us. All right. So, I don't know if I covered this, but uh, for sapper abilities, proficiency-wise, you gain a grenade pocket. So, at rank 1, you get a grenade pocket. You can equip an additional grenade, as you would have seen already. Uh, grenades and rockets damage the environment, deal plus 3 environmental damage. At rank 3, um, the grenade that you put in your grenade pocket gains plus 1 charge. This excludes special unique grenades and rockets. Uh, maximum scatter when firing rocker held grenades is significantly reduced. Grenades and rockets that uh, damage targets gain 25% chance to critically hit. And then at major rank 6, gain plus 1 additional charge on grenades in your grenade pockets. It excludes unique grenades and rockets. Maximum scatter is further reduced. Standard explosive grenades and rockets deal more environmental damage. Plus 1 base and plus 1 damage on critical hits. Now, as these guys start to level up, I'll probably start experimenting more with rockets this season. Um, the scatter is rough, but there's ways to mitigate that, especially at the higher ranks. The scatter should be a lot more predictable, and uh, it'll allow for a little bit of varied usage for us. Our Templar, Byron Nightwolf Powell. God, you look creepy, and I kind of love it. I kind of love it. Um, so for those that don't know how these guys work, their proficiency classes are like this. Um, they harness energy from enemies they kill and use it to cast powerful psionic abilities. Other Templar abilities grant additional benefits based on the amount of stored energy. Templars are armed and armored with conviction. Many of their abilities are guaranteed to hit, and they have a chance to partially deflect incoming attacks, reducing the severity of any hits received when successful. Templars can periodically empower their abilities, channeling additional energy into their psionic abilities to trigger more powerful effects. So, at level 1, the maximum amount of energy they can store is 3. At Sergeant, it's 4. At Major, it's 5. Chance to partially deflect incoming attacks is at 20%. That goes to 25% and then 33%. This is very rare that this actually happens. Um, what's nice is at rank 3, they start with 1 energy. So, that's kind of helpful. They have Ren, so it's a guaranteed melee attack. Um, they have Brand. Brand an enemy with a psionic hex, permanently weakening them. Weakening them against incoming attacks grants the Templar a 50% chance to also get that energy on death, regardless of how that target's killed. And then this is the Empower ability. Um, 
costing an additional energy to cast, but granting additional effects. So you can empower something like Brand here uh, for two energy. Target will take plus one damage when attacked and an additional plus one when critically hit versus just the 10% chance to hit buff there. Um, that's pretty much the only thing that we can empower right now. But yeah, happy to have you here. Let's read your bio. Okay. Finally accepted into XCOM after a year of applying, Byron's transport was shot down en route to a secondary XCOM base. All of the transport crew were killed, but Byron and a half dozen other recruits managed to escape the wreckage. They began walking toward the location of the base, only to see it overrun and reduced to ruin before their eyes. As information trickled in through the radio they'd managed to salvage, it became clear what they had seen. The war was over, XCOM was defeated, and all of their bases had been smashed just like the one in front of them. Left stranded with no homes to return to, the small band of survivors had no choice but to carry on in the wilderness. Survival turned out to be the ultimate training course, and they quickly became proficient enough with the weapons they scrounged from the ruins of the base to feed and protect themselves. However, about two years after the end of the war, the new Advent regime began sending forces out to examine the old XCOM bases. One of these patrols headed to the nearby base stumbled across the survivors' camp with no warning. Byron and the rest fought back as best they could and took down several Advent soldiers but stood little chance. One by one, the former recruits succumbed until only Byron remained. The patrol's sectoid leader decided to bring this last survivor in alive and attempted to incapacitate Byron with a mind spin. Byron felt the psionic tendrils of the attack burrowing into his mind, bringing the horrible pain of his recent memories flashing to the surface. The devastation of the cities, the destruction of the XCOM base, the crash and the broken bodies, the final screams of his companions as they fell to the advent attack until one last thread of his mind refused to break. Instead of succumbing to the pain, this last vestige of mental fortitude began to harness it. Channeling all the pain and trauma of the last three years, Byron focused it back through the psionic link to his tormentor, unprepared for such a reaction. The sectoid was instantly overwhelmed by the concentrated flood of anguish pouring from its would-be victim. The feedback spilled through the Advent Patrol's psionic command network to incapacitate the few remaining troopers while leaving the sectoid frozen in place helpless as Byron advanced on it with his knife in hand. Byron claims to this day that he has no clear memories of the next few minutes and no idea what exactly happened to the last advent troops, but the amount of orange blood splattered around him when he regained his senses made it clear that they hadn't walked away. Leaving the battle site and the ruined base behind, Byron headed into the wilderness alone until he was found by a group of Templars who had sensed his psionic feedback pulse. He accepted their offer to join and threw himself into learning to control and harness the one weapon he'd found that could bring victory against the aliens. Love it. Cool tie-in with a lot of the psionic talk. Templar is obviously being naturally psionically gifted. Uh, yeah, happy to have you, Nightwolf. Great name. And you're going <laughs> to... Trust me, you're going to be doing some work for us very, very soon. Okay, let's continue. We still have work to do. Uh, so now we have Templar covert actions. Um, experimental items could be decent. Like to avoid ambushes, but basic utility items could be fine. 13 days there. Form a soldier bond. I think this is better to wait for until we can buff one that's in place. And I don't know that I want to make those commitments just yet. Uh, we have nine ready at the moment which is not a lot. So I think I'm just gonna, we're just gonna wait. Let's see what kind of missions start popping. Supplies done. We're gonna go ahead and start building the guerrilla tactics school. That way when we start doing infiltrations, we can uh, get the upgrade which will reduce our infiltration penalty for having a fifth and sixth squad mate. Pretty helpful. Go back down to the rookies now. A new assault mission. So no infiltrations just yet. Delaying the dark event. Yeah, this one is pretty important. Um... Sabotage the advent 
monument. So this is going to be more just a traditional fight. The hunter could be here, um, but since we just saw him, extremely unlikely. I don't, I don't think it's likely at all. Um, this does mean that we're going to have to do another assault mission later on to fully counter this dark events. Um, chosen surveillance, potential complication here. But I think this dark event does warrant trying to stop this, where they can just constantly respawn. Especially early on, it's you, just imagine you're killing all these different advent soldiers and then they're spawning back, you have to kill them again. It's, it's too problematic, in my opinion. All right. So what do we want to do? Where are we going here? It's in a city center. So, sappers, sappers, and more sappers. Explode everything. I think is pretty reasonable. <laughs> uh, I think we could bring our Templar. Get some action here. Uh, Koenig. Yeah, we could usually get up top somewhere. Wouldn't mind bringing our Phalanx out. And that is a little heavy on the close range, but we do have a, a bunch of grenades too. Uh, so maybe we take somebody like Boltos or Reactor 4. His aim's actually very good. Plus then we have the uh, the med kits. So that works for me. And notice how he starts equipping the his weapon that he had previously equipped because it's available. So very nice to see there. We have wildcats as well. Is anybody here more likely to crit? Not really. I think we'll actually throw those. Oh, I can't because that's a magazine slot. That's right. I could put it here, I guess, on our field medic for this mission. And then one of these guys can take our frost bomb. Let's go here. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll switch one of these guys to the shotgun. That new rifle that you saw there, this is the pool mother specific rifle. Other classes can use it. It's pretty neat though, and I think we will take it. Um, if you compare it just to what we're regularly using, the assault rifle three to five, clip size of four, bonus crit of one. Uh, this is 4 to 5 damage, bonus crit of 1, clip size of 4, aim bonus of 8. Tune for accuracy, um, you get the plus 8%. Because it's salvaged enemy equipment, we can't throw any upgrades on it, but that's fine for right now because we're low on upgrades anyways. Um, and then you gain a 10% critical hit chance and one point of armor pierce against marked targets, which, to be fair, we're not going to be able to do a lot. We do have a Templar that could possibly do it. Um, let's just see here. Actually, you know what we'll do? I'm going to give this to Reactor 4, just to really get his aim as high as possible. And then you can take this other gun. And then you'll stick with the shotgun. We've got the pistol here and the ballistic shield. And the marksman were set up there. The ho Oh yeah, we can mark with the hollow targeter as well. So that's something to consider. And then the shard gauntlets and the auto pistol. I think this is fine. We don't need to bring a lost lure. Everything else looks good. So this should be our group that we take. Uh, once this is done, I might recruit more uh, rookies to send out on some additional covert actions. But let's worry about getting through this first. Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, stay tuned for the credits. You'll see the answer to yesterday's trivia question and a brand new meme at the end as well. Have a good one. Wish me luck. We'll see you next time.